O Lord, open thou our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm of the day is psalm number 118, beginning on page 483. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, because, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now confess that he is gracious, and that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now confess that his mercy endureth forever. Yea, let them now that fear the Lord confess that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in trouble. And the Lord heard me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon mine enemies. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put any confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All nations compassed me round about, but in the name of the Lord did I destroy them. They kept me in on every side, they kept me in, I say, on every side, but in the name of the Lord did I destroy them. He they came about me like bees and blazed up even as the fire among the thorns, but in the name of the Lord did I destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall. But the Lord was my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The voice of joy and health is in the dwellings of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord bringeth mighty things to pass. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord bringeth mighty things to pass. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened and corrected me, but he hath not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may go into them and give thanks unto the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter into it. I will thank thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The same stone which the builders refused is become the headstone in the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Help us now, O Lord. O Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is with God, and he hath given us light. Set in order the procession with branches, yea, even up to the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will thank thee. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, for his mercy endureth forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was, the beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told they will see, and what they have not heard they will understand. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, 
a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer, and though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities." Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Here endeth the first lesson. This is the fourth of Isaiah's five suffering servant songs. Likely, Isaiah thought of Israel as the servant, who suffers in order that the whole world should be redeemed. Inevitably, however, Christians saw Jesus Christ as a subject of Isaiah's prophecy. This was correct, for the law and the prophets, the priesthood and the monarchy, indeed the whole history of Israel, had been ordained by God to prepare for our Lord, who would sum all of it up in himself, and extend it to all people through his one, holy, catholic, and apostolic church. But at what a price! My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and the meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 29th verse. As Jesus approached Bethphage and Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. 
peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it, because all the people hung on his words. Here endeth the second lesson. This lesson relates Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, which is the first day of Holy Week. Notice that what the disciples declare in verse 40 is in fact so true and necessarily spoken that nature itself would have to declare the presence of its king if the disciples did not. Yet Jesus knows that his own city will reject him, although he exercises his rightful authority over those who profane the place where his honor dwells. Thus the stage is set for the drama of this week. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according, according to thy me. word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to light in the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind hast sent thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience, and also be made partakers of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, in being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
the light and our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let, let our, our cry come, come unto thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.